Um, good morning. I, I genuinely feel I do have to apologise for the photo because I'm not actually a serial killer. I know it looks like that. Um, uh, so um, I'm Mark Schneider and I manage the West Midlands European Service and uh, we're a project which is funded under the present ERDF programme under the technical assistance and our function is to help organisations in the West Midlands benefit from European funding. So what we're doing at the moment is we're looking at the future programme and essentially that's what I'm going to do today. A quick canter through the new programme which is about to start in 2014 and how it could link in to the work that's being done here by the CREATE project. So uh, to those of you who uh, know a bit about European funding, this may be a little bit repetitive, so I'm sorry for that, but uh, um, hopefully it'll give you an indication of where the project could have impact. So, um, as I say, we have a new program starting, a new structural funds program starting from 2014 it will run until 2020 and that program is essentially based on certain priorities. Structural funds are there to improve conditions across Europe. So uh, what has been identified are certain key targets, certain things where Europe has to improve and these are those targets. So for all funding spend over the next seven years they have to address these elements. So it's a whole series of targets to do with employment, research and innovation, uh, climate change is a new one, education, poverty and social inclusion, um, or social exclusion. So it, the Commission has, or the European Union has these targets and it will seek to use the funding to hit, hit those targets. So talking about European structural funds, what am I actually talking about? Uh, essentially, it's um, ESF, which is European Social Fund, ERDF, which is European Regional Development Funding, plus cohesion funds and elements to do with agriculture, with the CAP. Um, most of the money is in the first two elements, in the ESF and ERDF. So that, that's what I mean when I'm talking about structural funds. Um, this is the final budget breakdown. The budgets were agreed about two or three months ago. So we, as you can see, there's fairly large figures here. Uh, we're talking about quite a large amount of money being spread across Europe to have impact uh, at a regional level. Um, the Commission has also come up with new uh, classifications of regions as well. Uh, we have less developed, transition and more developed and on the basis of where regions sit, they get different levels of funding and different intervention rates. So in terms of the actual priorities of the program, what the SIF stands for is Structural and Innovation Funds. So from 2014 until 2020, these are the priorities for the spend of uh, structural funds. There's actually 11 in total. The 11th one is to do with management and delivery, which is a very minor element, so I actually haven't put this on here. So in terms of how this is divided up, we have uh, ERDF money, which deals with the first seven areas, and then the remaining three is ESF, European Social Funds. So the ERDF money is looking at research and development, supporting SMEs, um, looking at climate change, low carbon and transport. The majority of the money is in those areas that are highlighted in red. Um, so 60% uh, of the expenditure has to go into research and development and supporting SMEs. Another 20% has to go into the low carbon. So 80% of the uh, ERDF money is already fixed. What's interesting for the CREATE project obviously is that priority two enhancing access and use and quality of ICT. Um, so that, that element really plugs in very well to what the work of, is being done through CREATE. Um, in terms of the remaining, the ESF money, uh, a lot of it is, as the present program is, it's looking at uh, employment, looking at skills, all those sorts of issues. So in terms of what the key elements are, the main differences 
for the new programme compared to the one we're in at the moment. It, it's essentially what the, what uh, what's been reviewed is that uh, you have all these programmes running at the moment and they don't necessarily work together very well. So from 2014 onwards, the wish is that those programmes will work together more effectively. So you initially had something called a common strategic framework, which has now become the Structural Innovation Fund, and essentially it's combining uh, the social element uh, with the research element with the rural element. So you're bringing ESF, ERDF, and the rural money together to act and have better impact. Also, there's a more heavy focus on results. Uh, people are always very surprised um, when you talk about results, and they always say, well, structural funds, surely the results was the main purpose of the money. Unfortunately, a lot of it tends to be focused on how, how, you're, how much money you're spending rather than what you're spending your money on. So uh, this has been recognized, and now there's more, it's more target-driven, so the outputs are far more important. And really, this links into the final point, which is to do with uh, conditions related to the spend. So the, the, what's been set aside now is a 7% performance review. So if uh, a region is performing badly, it, will have, uh, it won't be able to get access to that last 7% of the money, and that will go to someone else. So to try and reinforce this whole idea of uh, targets. Um, the actual detail under here is not so important. What's important really is that what the program is uh, changing into is something called place-based. So it's very much focused about spending money in geographically defined areas. Uh, because again, uh, looking at the impact of the present program, previous programs, they've realized that if you define things precisely, if you can define a geography, it's more likely to have an impact uh, the way that you spend the money. So place-based is the key element of the new program as well. Um, so let's talk about the UK um, and what's going on here because uh, everything's changed here in the UK now. Um, particularly, well, mainly England, that's where the changes are going on. So this is the new delivery model for the structural funds from 2014 onwards. Um, it's quite complicated. Um, we're living in interesting times, but essentially what it means is that um, in England, we now have something called LEPS, uh, Local Enterprise Partnerships, and they're gonna be the main delivery mechanism for the uh, future funding program. So they're the key in England. The program hasn't really changed that much in Scotland, Northern Ireland, or Wales. It's still the same as it was before. Really, it's in England the big impact is. So at the moment, uh, for the present program, we had regional development agencies, or we were, they were there until 2010, and we had nine programs for structural funds, which were delivered by these regional development agencies. Uh, from 2014 onwards, we've got 39 LEPs, and they are uh, going to be the main uh, well, strategic mechanism for the uh, new structural funds. So you've gone from 9 to 39. So things are interesting, to say the least. Uh, they're, they're changing quite dramatically. Uh, no one really knows what the impact of this is going to be. Uh, we're moving into uncharted territory in terms of how the program's going to be delivered in, in England. It's never been a national program before with 39 organisations delivering at a local level. So come back and see what happened. has happened in about three or four years' time. It could be complete chaos or it might actually work quite well. Uh, no one really knows. In terms of what a LEP is, for those that you don't know, Essentially, it's a, a link up between public and private sector to deliver economic impact, economic performance. Uh, just, just a bit, bit more background on the LEPs. Uh, so they, they've been tasked with uh, identifying all the needs at a local level, engaging with all the right people, a whole range of organisations they have to talk with. Uh, so that's businesses, civil society, third sector, all these sorts of people to get an idea of what they think the money should be spent on. Um, then they are in the process of putting together a draft, uh, which will then be submitted back to the government, 
and this draft is the strategy for how they think uh, structural funds should be spent over the next seven years. Um, so the programme is very tight here in, in England. I, th I think uh, Northern Ireland, Wales and Scotland may have actually finalised their operational programmes already. Um, in England, they have until the 7th to submit the drafts the LEPs do. Uh, the government will come back in November to give them feedback and the final versions go in at the end of January. Um, so the UK government is planning to submit its partnership agreement to the Commission at the end of December. So the draft information provided by the LEPs will go into that. Um, and as you can see, no one's quite sure when the programme will start, the new programme, maybe summer, autumn next year. So if we bring this down to a little bit more of a local level, so the West Midlands, as I say, used to be, um, uh, the programme used to be managed by a regional development agency which covered the whole area. We now actually have six LEPs uh, covering the West Midlands area and they're a mixture of more developed areas and transition areas. So here in the Marches Lab, which Herefordshire is part of, uh, Herefordshire is classed as more developed but the other parts of the uh, lab, uh, Shropshire, Telford and Reakin in the north is actually regarded as um, less developed. So the lab has been divided in half by the European Commission NUTS 3 codes. So that adds another layer of complicatedness, but these are local issues um, which people have been discussing for the last seven or eight months quite intensely. Um, it's something to be aware of because obviously uh, it has impacts on the co-financing rates because if you're less developed, you'll get more money from the, European, uh, from the Commission in the end. So in terms of how much money the West Midlands has actually been given, so these are the six LEPs that cover West Midlands area, we have actually done surprisingly well. Um, everyone was predicting a cut for the West Midlands of between 10 and 25 percent. We actually have, I think it's the same or slightly more. And I should add that these figures uh, don't include the rural funds, which haven't actually announced how much money they're going to make available. So um, the West Midlands has done surprisingly well. So there's a reasonable amount of money to spend. Again, here in the Marches, it's 113 uh, million euros over seven years. So obviously this has to be matched up again, but it's, you're talking about reasonable amounts of money. Uh, just a quick summary of what the priorities are for the West Midlands. Uh, the West Midlands has certain endemic issues which have been running for probably 25 or 30 years. Um, and a lot of them are to do uh, with the decline of industry in urban areas. So there's a, a lot of traditional industry has gone and that hasn't necessarily been replaced by anything else. Um, so you have a fairly low levels of innovation in many areas in the West Midlands. Uh, you don't have a lot of high added value businesses um, and also there's a lot of problem with skills uh, in the West Midlands too. So where you do have innovative businesses, uh, the people to actually work in those businesses may not be there. So, as I say, a lot of these problems have been running for quite a while in the West Midlands and um, the money that will be made available will be targeting these sorts of uh, things to see if they can uh, address these problems. So then if we move down again in a, in a, into a little bit more detail to look at ICT, <coughs> which is the purpose of uh, a lot of the activity to do with CREATE. So I mentioned already ICT is a priority under the uh, <coughs> new structural funds programme. Um, <coughs> so these are some facts and figures about um, the West Midlands really in terms of access to ICT, access to superfast broadband, uh, the take up of broadband. Uh, here in the west of the West Midlands, um, there are issues, there are whiteouts, which is, people have been talking about. There's a lack of access to suitable um, broadband and broadband which is of sufficient speed, really. But when you look at it, there, there is a lot of infrastructure in place and in many ways what it comes down to is actually using that infrastructure that's there in a more effective way. So stimulating demand is the key. And a lot of money will be spent in the new programme, in the new structural funds programme, on stimulating demand. 
So that will be training up SMEs, good practice, awareness raising, all those sorts of things. And really this is the link, uh, the impact that CREATE can have on the future program. Uh, because obviously you'll be undertaking work, uh, you'll be demonstrating, you'll be exchanging good practice, you'll have facts and figures which will then allow you to go to the LEP, your March's LEP, or even more broadly uh, here in the UK and say, this is what works. So let's try and integrate this into projects that are coming along the line. So really, this just reiterates it. So this is the, the whole idea of stimulating demand. So as an organisation, West, uh, West Midlands European Service is promoting cross-lap activity around these um, main priorities. Because we, we feel there are certain things that can be delivered at a LEP level, but also at a, above a LEP level, at a cross-lap level. And this is where you can influence in terms of the UK. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on across the rest of Europe. I'm sure um, policies have been fixed. I mean, the Commission has already decided what its priorities are. So it's not about lobbying so much as actually delivering projects based on the work that you're doing that fit into this future structural funds programme. Because in the end, uh, what you have to do is justify all your activity on the basis of evidence. And really, this is what CREATE is about collecting evidence um, and proving what works and what doesn't work. 